We're in Colossians chapter 1, and we're still in the section between verses 9 and 13, where Paul's praying for the Colossian believers that they may be filled with the knowledge of God's will and all spiritual wisdom and understanding, so as to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to Him. He describes what that means, bearing fruit in every good work, increasing in the knowledge of God, which is what we're going to talk about this time, and then it being strengthened with all power according to His glorious might for all endurance and patience with joy, and giving thanks to the Father who's qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. We're going to focus today on this phrase, increasing in the knowledge of God. And this word increasing is used throughout the New Testament as both increasing and as growing. Okay, in fact, in Luke chapter 1, verse 80, talking about Jesus as a child, it says, And the child grew and became strong in spirit. He was in the wilderness until the day of his public appearance in Israel. And so in this context, it was used to describe both the physical and the spiritual growth as G of Jesus from um, immaturity as a child to maturity as an adult. Okay, I think we can use you know this kind of understanding as we look at this passage in Colossians as well. As, as, um, as Paul says, uh, bearing fruit in every good work and growing in the knowledge of God. Um, but what does that mean to grow in the knowledge of God? I think at least part of it is uh, informational, right? We definitely continue to grow in our knowledge, our theoretical knowledge of God, and um, knowing about him through his word. We understand who he is, what he likes, what he dislikes, um, what his plan for redemption is on the earth, and we understand him from this theoretical perspective. Uh, but I think we also grow in our knowledge, uh, like our revelation knowledge of him, right? As his spirit begins to interact with his word, through um, through the word, through prayer, through possibly even teaching, biblical teaching um, in our lives, that God begins to reveal himself to us and call us to himself in salvation and sanctification. Um, so we grow in this knowledge as well. But I think there's another kind of knowledge that we grow in um, as believers, as we are walking with him through this life, and that is um, the, the kind of knowledge that is um, relational. Um, we grow in knowing him as our father, right? And, and and we grow in this as we walk with him, as we are obedient to him. Like the James says, don't be hearers of the word only deceiving yourselves, but be doers of the word. As we do the word, as we walk in faithfulness to God, as we, um, as we bear fruit in every good work, as we're strengthened with all power, for all endurance and patience with joy, as we give thanks to the God the Father, as we are obedient and walking in these good works, he's bearing his fruit um, through our lives, through his spirit. Um, we're experiencing him. We're experiencing his power. We're experiencing his faith faithfulness um, to his promises and to us as his people. We're learning to hear his voice, um, experiencing his love and his grace and his mercy in our life. And we're, we're experiencing um, being led by his spirit. Like the more we walk with God, the more we know him. And the more we know God, the more that we're changed by him. And this change is what I want to focus on today. This change is called spiritual growth. And it just means maturing in our faith. And this is something that every single believer is called to. Um, in, in Ephesians chapter 4, Paul says he gave some to be apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints for the work of ministry, for the building up of the body of Christ, until we all attain to the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God, unto a full-grown person, you know, an adult, um, a man or a woman, under the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ okay and so this this process of growing from from you know uh, immaturity to maturity it's the same whether you're talking about human growth or whether you're talking about spiritual growth okay um, when someone is born into the world as an infant they can do nothing for themselves someone has to do everything for us when we're that size right um, we can't we can't feed ourselves so someone has to feed us usually at that point we can't even handle you know solid food we can't eat like a burger or a plate of spaghetti um, we need milk and so someone feeds us a bottle but the point of that feeding is that um, we would grow stronger that we're able to eventually handle you know maybe some baby food and then eventually we can handle some solid food food um, and then at some point in our life we mature to the point that we can actually feed ourselves um, and when we get reach full maturity we can not only feed ourselves but we can actually feed other people as well right and this process is the same spiritually um, and it happens both in the word and in prayer but we hear this in the church even from believers who have been believers for a long long time it, this this phrase like I wasn't being fed you know, I'm not being fed at this church. I need to go find a church where I can be fed. And, and that might be true. I'm not knocking that because if you are a spiritual baby, um, then yes, you do need to be fed. You should be fed. But the point of that feeding 
is that you would eventually learn that you would be able to take in more than just milk, that you'd be able to take in some solid food. Um, and this this is like something that, that actually Paul dealt with, or I, I think Paul wrote the epistle of the Hebrews, but um, you know, some people disagree with that. Anyways, in Hebrews, the writer of the Hebrews says this, for though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you again the basic principles of the oracles of God. You need milk and not solid food, for everyone who lives on milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness. He is a child, spiritually, right? But solid food is for the mature, for those who have their powers of discernment trained by constant practice to distinguish good from evil. See, the, the point of um, fee, being fed is that at some point um, you grow strong enough, big enough, mature enough that you can feed yourself. Okay, And then at that point you can feed others. When you begin to grow up, you don't need someone to feed you anymore. You can feed yourself. And not only that, you can actually begin to feed others. So he's given the apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers, and evangelists to the, to the body of Christ to equip the saints, all of us, for the work of the ministry, for the edification of the body of Christ. And so he's he's given those roles so that they can build us, each one of us, up to the point that we can do the same. Equip the saints for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. And so there's the word that we need to grow in, but there's also prayer, right? As a little baby, um, you don't know how to speak yet, and you don't understand someone else speaking a language to you. You have to learn the language. You have to learn how to form words with your mouth. You have to you learn how to listen and hear what someone's saying and to understand. You learn conversation and communication and you learn relationship with other people. You learn how to interact as a human being. The same thing is true spiritually, right? When when we grow in this area of prayer spiritually, this is growing in our relationship with God. He's our Father. He's the source of all life. He's the source of all power in our lives. And this is why we're constantly being exhorted to prayer in the New Testament. In 1 Thessalonians, Paul said, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you right and in Philippians he told the Philippians don't be anxious for anything but in everything with prayer and supplication let your request be made known to the Lord and the peace of God that passes all understanding will guard your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. In other words, he didn't say, um, let your request be made known to the prayer team, let your request be made known to the pastor, let your request be made known to the elders or the deacons or to some saint that's been dead for a thousand years so that they can go talk to Jesus on your behalf. He said, you let your request be made known to the Lord, okay? Let them be made known to him directly, right? And then the peace of God that passes all understanding is gonna guard your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. Jesus, when he told his disciples to pray, he said, pray like this, Father in heaven, holy is your name, your kingdom come, your will be done. He, he taught them to pray to God. And this is something we need to grow in. See, prayer grows our relationship with God as our Father and our knowledge of God as our Father as we build and grow in intimacy with him. When we've matured in this area of our lives, we don't need someone to go up to God on our behalf. And we don't need them to come and tell us what God has said to us because we can go to God ourselves. We can be taught and instructed and led by him in his word and in prayer by his Holy Spirit that is within us. Okay, but this focus of spiritual growth and maturity, it, it's, it's lacking a lot of times in our understanding as believers, right? Um, it's like when, when the writer of the Hebrews said, like, you ought to be teachers already, and, and yet you still need to be taught the basics. You know, you, you need milk and not spiritual food. Like you ought to already be teaching others these things and training them up. And, and this just shows that spiritual growth is just not automatic, is it? It doesn't happen by just going to church on Sunday. We go to church on Sunday and we spend an hour and a half there and we get all our prayer and we get all our word and we get all our fellowship and all our worship and then we're good. Maybe we have communion too. We have some sacraments. Okay, cool. We're good for the week, right? No, that's not how this happens. Spiritual growth happens in the context of living in constant communion communion with God and with God's people, right? Spiritual growth is definitely God's work, okay? But it's also something that we have to apply ourselves to as well. Like in Philippians, when Paul said, um, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Like, that's crazy. Like, you got to participate in this. You got to do something. You can't just sit back and, and be lazy and let God do it all for you. Uh, I'm not trying to be mean here, but you know, this is something that we participate in. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. And he says, for it is God who works in you both to will and to do according to his good 
pleasure, okay? So as we press into God, God is also giving us the will, the desire. He's, he's working in us both to will and also to do it, like to do it, to grow, right? Um, according to his good pleasure. And so it's something that we need to participate in as believers. Um, I want to just finish with two things. Um, one of them is the context, like where spiritual growth happens. And the other is the process that God uses. Okay. And so the context of spiritual growth, where God has designed for this to happen is in the body of Christ. And body of Christ is the community of God. It's the family of God. We're, we're supposed to grow um, by being in fellowship, in communion, learning how to walk. And this is the same as we grow in a, in a physical family, right? In our family, we grow in relationship with our mother and our father and possibly our siblings. And we're learning and we're watching them and how they do things. And we're learning to walk. We're learning to talk. We're learning to eat and how to feed ourselves. And we get a little older, maybe we're learning how to make food and to feed the little ones and help care for them, help to teach them. We're formed um, in community by being known and being accepted for who we are and by knowing others and accepting him as well. Um, we see our flaws. We see the flaws in the people around us, but we agree that, hey, let's all grow together. Let's all become the people God has called us to be together. We're formed through this relationship. Relationship. We're, we're challenged and we're taught and we're led by example in these relationships. The other thing that happens in community is we actually experience Jesus through our brothers and sisters. And the coolest thing ever is that they get to experience him through us if we're walking with him and growing and becoming the people he's called us to be, right? Um, Jesus' disciples had a little bit of an advantage over us in this area, right? Because they actually got to live with them. They, they learned by watching his actual life, having him teach them directly, show them, this is how you heal. This is how you pray for people. This is how you have compassion. This is how you teach. Well, we don't have that advantage of having Christ physically present with us. But what we do have is we have the presence of his Holy Spirit in his church. And as we um, stay in community, as we live in community with the body of Christ, we experience Christ. Christ's grace and mercy through our brothers and sisters as we learn and grow. We experience his love through our brothers and sisters. And this is what he said, right? This is how they're going to know that you're my disciples, by your love for one another. We experience his care and concern as we go through trials or difficult circumstances. We experience his correction and rebuke even when we fall or fail and we need to be restored in a spirit of love and gentleness, right? In his body, um, we're designed to grow together with all of the saints. Um, it, later on in Colossians, in this chapter, in fact, in verses 18 and 19, Paul's talking about how um, we need to hold fast to Christ, who is the head of the body, right? He says, they're not, the, he's talking about other people, he says they're not holding fast to the head um, from whom the whole body is nourished and knit together, right? Through its joints and ligaments. And together we grow with a growth that is from God. Okay, we grow in community with one another. And the last part is that the process that God has ordained that we would grow in is a process called discipleship. Like Matthew 28, right? Jesus gives the Great Commission. What did he say? Go and make what? Go and make go and make disciples. Go and make disciples of all nations. They so say go and make believers, go and make Christians, go and make, you know, confessors go and make followers. No, he said, go and make disciples. And if you're a believer, if you're a Christian, if you're a follower of Christ, um, you're a disciple and you're meant to be discipled. And you're going to be discipled to the point where you can begin to disciple others. This is our purpose. Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. So if you haven't been baptized, you need to do that. And then he says, teaching them to obey all the things that I've commanded you. Okay, this is the apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, equipping the same for the work of the ministry, edification of the body of Christ. That's what this is. But we eventually become, as disciples, the disciplers. We are the ones that equip. We're the ones that teach. And so this process of growing up in Christ includes growing in the Word and growing in prayer, um, being connected into the body of Christ where we all grow together. We help form each other into the image of Christ. And, and then it also includes becoming, becoming the person God has called us to be because eventually we're going to need to go also and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey all that he's commanded us. But this process of growing up in Christ, it, it's always, whether it's physical or spiritual, it's growing from dependency to adulthood, from, from being disciples spiritually to making them. Um, we're all called to this, every one of us, not just pastors, not just evangelists, not those with seminary degrees. Um, it's you, and it's me, and it's our moms, and our dads, and our grannies, and our grandpas, and, and our children 
children. We're going to disciple them, and hopefully when they're mature, they can disciple others. Walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to Him, bearing fruit in every good work, and growing in the knowledge of God.